Hey everybody, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about how convergence of sequences is somehow either detected or inherited uh, by the tails of sequences or by subsequences of sequences. So our first theorem, our first theorem is going to be about tails. And so the name of this is that convergence is detected by tails detected by tails okay which is not surprising in terms of the words because our definition of sequence convergence was that every L coin contained a tail of the sequence so somehow you just need to be looking at tails right in order to figure out what something converges to so let's make this precise though so if a is a sequence and again, remember, this means a sequence of real numbers. So if A is a sequence such that a tail, okay, so I have some M that I start at. If that sequence convert, that, that tail sequence converges to L, right, or that tail subsequence, right, for some positive integer N, then the original sequence, a dot, also converges to L. Of course, and remember, I could say limit for each of these as well, right? That, that's fine. Okay, so as long as one of the tails converges, then your whole sequence converges. And this is right in line with the idea that the sequence really only cares about what happens in the long run. You don't care about the first few terms. All right, so let's write down a proof of this. It's going to be actually very, very short. So since every tail of the tail, a greater than or equal to m, right? This tail subsequence. So since every tail of the tail subsequence is also a tail of the original sequence, a dot. Okay, so why is that true? Well, what does a tail of a greater than or equal to m look like? Okay, well, let's see here. So if I had a1, a2, dot, 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 and then I have some am, and then I have some am plus 1, maybe some more dots, and then I have some, uh, I don't know, an uh, out here, and then an plus 1, and so forth. So I know that if I cut my sequence off and start at a sub m, I get a tail. Okay, well now what is a tail for a, so this would be a greater than or equal to m, what does a tail look like for a greater than or equal to m? Well, it means I just cut somewhere past m, right? I could, I mean, I could do it at m as well, but I have to cut somewhere to the right. So maybe I could cut it over here. And then this piece would be a greater than or equal to n. But this is now not only a tail of the a greater than or equal to m, but also a tail of a itself, all right? So this was a originally. So every tail of a greater than or equal to m is a tail of a dot. And so it follows that if every L coin contains a tail of a greater than or equal to m, well, how do I know that's going to be true? Well, I know actually that a greater than or equal to m converges to L. So in fact, I shouldn't even say if here, should I, right? It follows that since every L coin contains a tail, right? That's what it means for this subsequence to converge. So it follows that since every L coin contains a tail of a greater than or equal to m, every L coin contains a tail of a dot because every tail of a greater than or equal to m is a tail of a dot okay so that's the whole proof right there okay so if you can determine that a tail converges to something then you know your entire sequence converges to that same real number all right next what if i have a subsequence that's not a tail what can we say in that case. So this is actually going to be a corollary. 
And the name of this is going to be that convergence is inherited by subsequences. Okay, so the idea here is that if I know my sequence converges, then my subsequences are going to converge. And they're not only going to converge to something, they're going to converge to the exact same value. Okay, so, um, so let's let, again, A be a sequence. And let A n dot, okay, so remember n dot here is going to be some strictly increasing sequence of positive integers. Okay, and so we're taking some subsequence. So this is a subsequence of A. Okay, so now here comes the statement. So if we know that if we know that A converges to L, then also the subsequence A N converges to L. All right, so let's see if we can we can prove this. So uh, we know A converges to L. So every L coin contains a tail of A. All right, so we can say that every L coin contains a tail of A. All right, we want to show that every L coin contains a tail of A and dot. So let's do this for a particular L coin. Okay, so to get a particular L coin, I need to choose a radius. So we use our let epsilon be greater than zero move. Okay. So we know that because every L coin contains a tail of A dot, then the L coin of radius epsilon will contain a tail of A dot. So there exists uh, some positive integer. Again, we'll call it N of epsilon because it depends on epsilon. Such that the L coin of radius epsilon, which is L minus epsilon, comma L plus epsilon, contains the tail, not a tail, but the tail, a greater than or equal to n of epsilon. Okay, so we know that every L coin contains a tail of a. Okay, this is the tail. Okay, we don't know what this number is, but we know it must exist. All right, now, what I want to do is choose some index i such that if I go out to n sub i, remember, n dot, right, n dot is some n1, n2, n3, and it's some strictly increasing sequence. Okay, I want to go out far enough in this strictly increasing sequence of natural numbers so that that point I get to is at least as big as this n of epsilon. So I choose my i. such that n sub i is already at least as big as n of epsilon. All right, I go out that far. And now I consider not the tail a greater than or equal to n of epsilon, but instead I look at the subsequence a sub n, and I take its tail where I start at n sub i. Okay. So now, the tail a sub n greater than or equal to i. So I'm going to start here. And I know now that all of these terms are past a greater than or equal to n of epsilon. Okay. Note, this is no longer, right? This is not a tail of a anymore. It's a tail of the subsequence a sub n right because it's it's only going to hit terms that actually show up in that subsequence however it is contained in the tail a and i okay 
for that as a tail of a okay so this tail um, is contained all right well we already know that it's contained in this tail a greater than or equal to n of epsilon which is contained in this l coin of radius epsilon so this is contained in the l coin of radius epsilon and there we go we needed to show that every l coin contains a tail of a n and that's exactly what we've done okay so the way we're typically going to use this corollary is actually going to be sort of in reverse right uh, we're going to uh, want to actually show that a sequence cannot converge because it has a sub sequence that doesn't converge or a subsequence that converges to one thing and then another subsequence that converges to something else in fact let me give an example so this example actually goes back to our first video on sequences so we already know that this doesn't converge but we uh we we had to write down i don't know well not super complicated proof but it was I don't know, a little bit annoying. So let's write down this alternating sequence. 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, etc. Okay. And we already know that this diverges through a proof that was really based on the definition. But if we use this corollary, the proof becomes very, very simple. All right. So we have two subsequences. So if I look at just the subsequence that contains all ones, then this converges to the number one. And if I contain, look at the subsequence of just negative ones, this converges to negative one. So that tells me that a dot has two subsequences that converge to different values. But the corollary tells me that if A converges, then every subsequence has to converge to the same value. Well, I've got two that converge to different values. The only way out, so this is by the corollary, the only way out is that A dot diverges, right? It does not converge. Okay, so there we go. Uh, so I encourage you to try to uh, write down your own such examples or maybe try to find an example uh, of the other idea we talked about which is remember we go back up here there's two things um, it could be that a n just doesn't converge at all right and therefore your a doesn't converge all right and and that's not the examples we had here right both of the subsequences we found right converge to something we'll try to write down one that doesn't converge to something and and of course an example a there that that also doesn't converge then okay so we'll see you next time when we talk about bounded and monotone sequences